Good to have you join us once again on Reporters Blog. It has been an interesting week indeed from Charles Entry being freed to President Mahama Pekinapa's nomination form to the Millennium City demonstration, not forgetting the District Assembly elections. As usual, my colleagues have been out there and they'll be joining us here to tell us what you did not see in the story. As usual, my name is Patricia Gasu and this is Reporters Blog. Welcome back. I've been joined in studio by my colleague um, Latif Idris. Yeah. Actually, he covered that story, the Charles H. Entry being freed. And then one other woman. Yeah, we have the latest, I mean, woman what was, What's her name again? That is Nana. You know, she has Victoria two names, Bois. actually. Yeah. Uh, she has a spiritual name. And then, you know, former. Kung Fu for, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, she's an Okonfor. To put it that way, she's an Okonfor. So, yeah. What did you find there? Uh, you know, later in the week, it, it came up that there is a woman who is also vying to be president. So we made some calls, get in, we got in touch with her, and then I arranged an interview with her. So I caught up with her somewhere, and then she revealed to us why she wants to be president. And it was interesting, <laughs> some of the things she had to say, you know. I didn't hear me. I hope, I hope. You were not laughing because of interviewing her. No, no. You know, once we are on the field, you get <laughs> no, serious. No, no, no. There was some, like, yeah, let's say when um, one of our reporters actually interviewed Judge Boating. Exactly. He, Judge he wanted to laugh, but, you, you know, to, yeah, <laughs> you just have to control yourself exactly, exactly. and get the interview. Exactly. So, you know, there was nothing funny about what she said. It was serious sound bites, you know, what she said were, were serious stuff. And, and so... I, 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 she, she caught my attention, if, if you like, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you know. So essentially, that was that was that was it with with this this woman who wants to be. Did she sound convincing personally to you? To me, I I wouldn't say that she's is, that convincing. Yeah, she, I wasn't convinced, but you know, she 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 she's speaking from a different world. You know, listening to her, she believes that. Uh, it is God that is bringing her to, to save this country. Okay. She says the NDC, the MPP, for all these all years the they've ruled or led this, this country. They've, they've had nothing to, to prove. And so God has appointed her to come and uplift the fortunes of, of this country. And that is why she's coming. You know what? She's 70 <laughs> years old. And so I asked her, you think you still have something to give to this country? And you know, she, she she was a bit harsh when I asked that question. She said, "How about our president? The current <laughs> president is, is young, and what what has he given and, us?" That 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 small boy, President Obama. That's, that's, what has he done? Know, yeah, <laughs> she, so it's, it's okay, interesting. So let's you know, say she's believing at her age she can do better than the rest. Better, better than what uh, President Rawlings has done. Better than what Kufu has done. I think she better commented on Kufu a bit. A bit, um, a bit. She said Kufu came in and then did some expansion of her road network. That was it. But then, apart from that, she, she's with the conviction that our leaders have failed us and that is why she's she... She's the right person exactly, to take over exactly, and deliver Ghana. And transform the <laughs> transform fortunes of, of the country. And make Ghana look like... Like somewhere in Europe. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about Charles Engie. Yeah. You have a new president. You know. <laughs> no, okay. So we now we now have three people, right? No, but we do not have. We have George Watson. He is vying to be president. Mm -hmm. he, and then he wants to contest President Mahama for the NDC flag bearer. And then Sak Asiedu Ngetia. Yeah, that's what. That's that's. You fire Asiedu Ngetia. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And then the lady, the okay, how is the woman? The woman, she wants to be president. She She's not contesting president. They Muhammad. all want to be president. Yeah, we have a coup father. He wants to be president. We okay. have, in fact, so we have, we, we have all the political, almost all the political parties Everybody. have presidential candidates. When, who, when, who, I, when, I, when I, okay, don't, don't you have that interest? Like, 
I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to talk about it. Do you have that interest? Do really you want to become a president? I don't want to talk about it. I think we are talking about Charles <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, on Monday, a smart uh, on, on Monday we we're, were in court. <laughs> okay, then maybe we'll talk about that one privately. Yeah, maybe. So okay. we were in court on, on 31st. <laughs> that was the day set for, for the ruling. Um, we have the trial judge at the high court and the decision by Justice Aubrey that got Charles Entry a 10-year jail term yeah, was quashed. Yeah. And so Charles Entry is now a free man. But you know, he's not a free man. Because yeah. as we he's speak... He's just going to be treated, right? Yeah, as we then speak, he he's, he's again. in the BNI... Custody. Yeah. So they move him from the BNI cells to the Akrasakratic Hospital on a daily basis for treatment. Now, this is what's going to happen. For the time that this treatment... When will, he was sentenced, where was he? Where did he was this still he was at still, BNI yeah, he was still, or maybe he was taken to the No, 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 he was, he was at the BNI cells. Okay, okay. Yeah, they, they kept him there because of his condition. He needed some special treatment. And that was the reason why he wasn't taken to, say, the Sawan prison or any other prison, but oh, okay. the BNI cells where he was given special treatment. That is what we have gathered, that he was given special treatment at the BNI cells. Now he's a free man, but he's, he's a prisoner of the court. That is what Charles Entry is right now. He's not a prisoner with the Ghana Prison Service. He's now a prisoner of the court. Okay, so, so now he, let's get to, let's talk, let's stop talking about them and now talk about you. Mm -hmm. You saw him. Yeah, I saw Charles Entry. I sat close to him, actually, mm. and I took some, you know, a bit of shots. Did you take any selfie with him? I tried taking some selfies, but it didn't work. <laughs> I tried even to have a word with Charles Entry, and the BN oh. officials were like, seriously, you want to talk with him? No, we will not allow you. I understood because, you know, Charles Entry is, is not, you know, so I, I understood. And so I let but did you just draw your conclusion when you saw him? No, you know, actually, as a matter of fact, when, when he got to, to the psychiatric hospital, he looked calm. He was calm. He shook hands with his counsel, that is Xavier Sosu. They had a friendly chat. He was introduced to the doctors who were going to take care of him. He was okay. He looked normal. And you know, one interesting thing that came up, when they were cracking him, I had someone who, who, who was giving me some bit of information that he was answering most of the questions correctly. Hmm. Like, give us today's date, he'll give it to you. Mention the days of the week from bottom up. He mentioned it, but only skipped one. <laughs> you know, so he was getting some of the things right. And so I was told that if, if he's able to do that, there will be a next step. So to, because this is a high profile case, they would have to be very sure and convinced that one, either he is sane or he is insane. So they have to exhaust all the means that is and available. Apart from he, um, okay, did he answer all the questions? Yeah, not, but not all of them. Apart from correctly. the... Some of it, you know, were not on point, some were on point, you know, so... So on a scale like, of one to 100? That we didn't get that information. <laughs> all we go was that he was answering some of the questions correctly and some of them were, were concerned that, okay, is this guy insane or is not insane? Okay, you know, now let's that. travel to Winneba. Yeah, you know, interesting. You know that man? Yes, I know him. Yeah, that's, he's the one who held the whole country to ransom. But, and eventually but, he but won. He won, yeah. You know, that's How was the journey? Where from here? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> You know, we didn't leave early. We left somewhere around midday. Okay. Yeah, so we got there. Elections were ongoing. Really People were voting. And you know, this man, he waited to vote at the last minute, just like, <laughs> just like he did. And the EC almost, you know, stopped him from filing his, his nomination. He waited to the last minute, went to the polling station with huge number of, you know, followers. followers. People following him in his neighborhood. I guess he came in late. He had to go and then gather his fans to follow him, give him moral support. Yeah, exactly. So he can know, vote. It was it was a planned something. Did, did like you have to join him? Okay, you were there before uh, he came, yeah. Yeah, sorry. you know. So I went to his house and then spoke with him. He told me that he's gonna win. 
I said, what happens if you lose? He said, don't use the word lose. I'm was gonna, he was convinced that he was going to win. And he won. He, you know, they had five polling stations in his electoral area. And he won the elections. He won at all these polling stations. Uh, you know, and it was the battle of the Mensas. The other contender was also Mensa. Okay. So Mensa, Mensa, and then it came up that he, he, he won. And now he is representing his community. And what he wants to do is to improve upon the sanitation situation and also to help rebuild. According to him, the children in the community do not sleep early <laughs> and it's affecting their you know, performance in, in school. And so he wants to ensure uh, some, something like that. He wants to ensure that they sleep on time so they can wake up early and then go, go to, to school. Okay. So these are some of the things he has planned to, you know, do for his I'm community. Just, I'm just waiting for anything you're ready. Just let me know. I guess I can sponsor, right? Anyway, thanks for your time, Reporters Blog. And that was my colleague, <laughs> Latif Idris. We'll be right back with more. Please stay. Welcome back. The program is still Reporters Blog with me, Patricia Gasu. My colleague Derek Ekosam has been all over this week from district level elections to Millennium City protests. And he joins me in studio. Welcome to Reporters Blog. Merci beaucoup. Ça va? Ça va bien. How does it, should I say, okay, let us feel what you felt when you were on the field. You can't feel what I felt when I was on the okay, field. Okay, so describe it. In a way, maybe the viewers out there, or to me, so I can understand how the whole thing was. Let me let's start from um, the district level elections before we come to the Millennium City protest. Fine. But so I knew how to cover the district level elections, especially at a month from where, um, for the past two months, they've been targets of armed attacks and raids. We wanted to see, and you know, they were blaming the. Um, assembly member and the DC and the other people make up the um, district administration of we're blaming them for not being proactive enough especially when it comes to issues concerning security yeah. so we wanted to know whether or not they were going for someone who would champion their cause who would help them secure the environment Charlie apathy level very high mm. as of 2 p.m. we didn't even have up to 100 people voting the excuse was that it was a market day Tuesday. So most of the women had gone to the market. market. But if you are concerned about what you want to do, you don't give excuses. I had to roam um, for almost three hours in a month from alone. Bear in mind that I, women I, not going to look for the people to come and vote? No, roaming from polling center to polling center. How many of It was more like pollination. <laughs> polling center to, pol to polling center. About eight of them. And for each one of them, I'd have to stop and pick a car because I wasn't having an official car with me. Okay. I'd have to stop and pick a car. You would alight at a place. You don't know where to go to. So you'd be asking around, looking all dirty because the whole place is dusty, dusty on tarred roads, bumpy rides. The cars were doing chukwe chukwe. <laughs> Charlie, it wasn't a nice experience for me. And then I had to cover Iron City as well. Sadly enough, Somebody I was rooting for actually lost. Somebody I wanted to win, he lost the elections. And since then, he's not been able to come out. He's staying indoors. And I don't know how long he, he would stay indoors, but we hope that things get better. And the people of Amafu were also hoping that they would actually get a younger person in there to lead them, because they tell me that the old men have failed them for so a very were, long time. So they want fresh um, brains in there. <laughs> uh, this month, Sam George is saying we want fresh blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. But not every fresh blood is actually fresh. Some of them have been diluted. They, 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 they can't do fuku, as they say. <laughs> so that was it. I'm out from. And I'll never forget that experience, too. Okay. So now let me push you to Millennium City. It's a city. A Millennium one, of course. Uh, I had a call or so in the morning to get up, wake up from bed. They actually woke me up from sleep to follow up on that story. 
and was going Castle correspondent. Uh, yes, official district correspondent for Castle. <laughs> um, I, I hope that Atto would actually make that one official so they can sleep at home and get up and go and report only on stories from Castle. But <laughs> well, so I get to the place around 9 a.m., get to meet the chief. Initially, they were built to have a press conference, a news conference, okay, to address certain concerns. According to them, their homes were being demolished. And so they needed. Then, how, how did they even acquire the land in the first place? Well, that's a story for another day. Okay. So, so let's put the story aside and let's talk about you. I'm getting there. So, by 9 o'clock, I was there. By 9 30, the residents had amassed at the chief's palace. They decided to walk and stage a protest to an area where the said demolition was taking place. And then I spoke to Fred Smith. Fred Smith actually gave me that gig. So I, took, uh, I told him that, Fred, hold on. I need you to be working with me on this one because I suspect it will turn bloody. Then I spoke to the chief. If anything happens to me here, you, your guys, will be blamed. Then the chief gave me two big guys, <laughs> bigger and stronger than I you am. Remind, you, remind, you, you remind me of um, uh, old Fadama. Anytime you have to go to the field, you need guards, guards around. Well, I think it's a special thing about me. Give me guards and out. No, I'm safe. I thought you said you were big and strong enough yeah. to yeah, face that, anything. So yeah, why do you need true, that's true. why the guards again? That's true. I I, I had to feel important. <laughs> so you had to feel important. So I had to know that okay. somebody behind me. Okay. So I was working gang, 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 gang. Then the soldiers came. Vroom, man tire, man scatter. Then I put my phone in my pocket. Because once they realize you're taking pictures, they will seize your phone. I put my phone in my pocket. Okay. And then I went to stand one side and I just put the, picked the phone up. And then I, really, I just pretended I was making a call. La, 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 la. I was taking videos. So at the point in time, I had a call to report on news desk as to what exactly was going on. So I moved away. And then, so for my first reportage on that day, I was actually running whilst reporting. And so you could hear from my breath that I was actually panting for breath. Yeah. And then I just turned around, I realized the guy who was actually supposed to protect me was lying down in a pool of blood. Charlie, not the best of scenes. Oof. Two others were also shot. The, the close shave with death, this is more like my toughest assignment ever. I've covered a whole lot of dem demonstrations this year. But this one, toughest one. And I think I need to throw this shirt away because anytime I wear this shirt, I'm going to cover a demonstration. I, 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 don't, I don't even know what to say, seriously. The hmm. guy you told the chief to let him accompany you, like, to be your guard. Yeah. I, I had two guards, actually. And one was shot. Yeah, so when I started running, the other one stayed behind, and, and one other guy had to run with me to ensure that I was safe. Then we turned around and realized the other guy was down. In the course of my reportage, I just went quiet. For almost 30 seconds, I was not talking reflecting on everything that I had gone on because that could have been me. Yeah, that could have been you. Serious. But for the Lord's mercies, what would I have been? So what happened to the other guard? Um, the, the other guard stayed with me throughout till I left the place. You know, because you know the residents were agitating. Yeah. And so once they realized you were taking photographs, they would also attack you because they, they, they thought they had spies within them. So the guard had to actually constantly tell them I'm a press man. I'm a journalist. Did you have your ID card on? I had my ID card on me. I actually wanted to talk to the military, to, to talk to the military guys. But the moment they realized I was a journalist, all they said was, my friend, go away. Move away from here. We don't want to talk to you. When you see the gun and you want to place the one, place the one. Wow. Other guns will say, oh, that's so bad. Charlie. But good to know you are safe. Good to yeah, know you're back. Yeah, yeah. And good to have you on reporters' blog. Good to, be, good to see you again. And... Well, we'll leave that for another day. Thank you for your time. And that was my colleague Derek Echo Sum. Um, we'll be right back with more. Please stay.
And before we wrap up today's show, my colleague Matilda Pomaga has joined me in studio. Welcome to <laughs> Reporters Vlog. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I like your, I like the style you sold for your, uh, uh. With your anniversary cloth. <laughs> this is the last one. Yeah, this one is really cool. I know you have my mom wild, loves this one. I know you like you have wild styles. Yeah, I, I do have some wicked style, one without a name and all that. But I think this one is cool. My mom loves it. Okay, it looks <laughs> mummyish. <laughs> that one's also look mummy. <laughs> you yeah, also mummy. You were the election headquarters. Yes, um, you were monitoring. All the, All the regions. Yes. Yourself, you went to Ashaiman? Yes, I went to Ashaiman. I was actually asked to monitor for Ashaiman. But, you know, interestingly, you know, Ashaiman over the years have been a hot spot for elections and all that. So, but I was surprised this, this election, you didn't really see anything happening. You only saw a few people who went out once a while to go and vote and then like these people when they like want to be wild they'll be wild yeah when they want to really if they have a case they'll be wild but if there's nothing really happening it was just a usual election coverage and all that but you won't see more you, you won't see them in their <laughs> <laughs> you in, see the, in, the, in the elements in the let's, elements let's just give it like let's just you say like but, you but, see them I, but the I think it's about time we we take that mindset about a shy but seriously they're wild that. people yeah they are they, they can be really wild that is if they have a case okay yes but if there's if there's no issue like this road uh, this road demonstration they did some time uh, back which to you covered you know how they they went so wild and we had to bring they had to bring in reinforcement and all that but this election was so peaceful i think it's also because a number of them were not that much interested in the election i had some i spoke with a few people who told me really they are not they are not bothered about especially because of the kind of candidates that they are seeing oh, okay yeah, some were trying to buy their votes and i was really wondering a uh, district level elections why would you want someone hey, to buy if, you don't like what, someone else is, if you're not interested someone else is no but this is just a district you level call it election. just, le just okay, district this, level this is this is district level <laughs> this is still, still. <laughs> district level election no this and is it shouldn't Okay, okay, you're, let trying, me take so you're trying to be smart by taking out the just. just yes, but I'm saying that it's only district level elections. It's only district. Tell yes. it's someone's it's, World Cup. Yeah, I know, I know. I spoke with some um, aspiring assemblymen, and they were so full of hope. Oh. So full of hope. I knew someone that I was told he organizes keep fit for the area, the the, 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 the youth in the Charlie. area. He sponsors <laughs> them food. And recently he he, he he brought in the NHIS to register um, members of uh, did, his... That particular person, did he win? No, he didn't win. Ouch. He didn't win. I was very sad for him because <laughs> I realized that that guy has spent in so much. He didn't win. I, I felt so sad. I for told him. you it's but a World Cup. <laughs> I you felt would so think sad it's for him. just an election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's I just a district at a district level, but <laughs> it's someone's uh, heaven. Yes, but what would you do? You know, that's what Sir John said. Fear delegates or uh, fear electorates or whatever <laughs> he said. You know, you like, can't like that ex as aspirant to did everything at the end of the day he had one vote so he was you, wondering you, what happened so, to my family no your, your family so you you can imagine so many things inform people's decision when they go there yeah. to cast their vote i know this guy he he brought in taxi there was one polling station i went in Ashaiman. i realized there was one particular taxi parked at the polling station this is what he was doing he was assigned by the aspirant to go around and pick the old men and the old women who can't move to the polling station to come and vote so that will convince them vote for me so that but anytime you need something surprisingly okay. this guy lost and i, I felt so sad like, I, I, like, <laughs> those, those are putting their all rather lost yeah but I think it's it's the people's choice, you know. Yeah. Even though a lot of people they didn't show so, I'll say so it's much not about interest. what you do. Yeah. It's not about you feeding them or you registering them or and all that. getting taxis to pick them up from their homes, like giving them that presidential treat. It's, it's it, it doesn't really matter though it's it counts to some extent, but it's not always true that when you do that, delegates will end up voting for you. Mm. It doesn't. But did you really... vote yourself? No, I didn't vote. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't vote. I was so keen on getting my stories and all that. You know, they woke me up 
very early and in it's fact so annoying. <laughs> after so daddy, i was like ah, how can you wake me up as early as 6 a.m to go and start this course and and you, listen, really? listen, 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 Pat. Okay. I'm for afternoon shifts. I know you're for my, afternoon shifts. My, my shifts start at f uh, 12 o'clock. Uh -huh. They start at 12 o'clock. Uh -huh. If you wake me up at 6 a.m. They've disturbed you. You know. They've disturbed you, Kara. They have. I couldn't sleep. What have you been dreaming about? That you, 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 you <laughs> it's sleep. a long time I dreamed, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's a long time I dreamed. But, you know, but, you know, monitoring from the other regions, like the Ashanti region, the... Upper West region, wow! You know, they, 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 they. I don't know. There were so many things happening there. At some point, some people went on demonstration. They were not going to vote, and a whole lot of things. You know, and th th there was this particular area that um, this uh, Bank of Ghana froze a, a particular microfinance account because of that uh, that was in the western region the, those people refused to vote and you know th this should tell you how people can get so serious about elections if certain critical things are not addressed for them they won't vote you would ask yourself how does a microfinance issue got to do what has it got to do with election but that is exactly what the people want if that thing is not being addressed for them it means they won't go ahead to vote and Truly, truly, we from what I got from the correspondent, the people didn't vote. So, but let, let's just in one word, how would you describe this whole election? I think um, uh, this issue about um, just in a word. Okay, how would you describe it? <laughs> just we had low turnout. Low turnout. You know. It was, I think it was everywhere. We didn't really expect that people would come out in their numbers because one, it was a it was work postponed. Yeah, it, it, was, it was postponed. For, it was postponed, and then the day itself was a working day. It wasn't yeah, a holiday. It wasn't, even a holiday. It it wasn't, wasn't even a weekend. A, it wasn't a weekend. Yeah. I don't think people would want to sacrifice their jobs for that. Would you have done that? No, 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 would no. no. We said, all have priorities. Yeah. Would you have said, okay, I'm coming to work, so, uh -uh. Um, okay, uh -uh. work done. Uh, you, you just chalk and then wait for me let me go and vote and then come it won't happen voting would bring money to my pockets no, 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 no. <laughs> so so in as much as they are calling that people should come out to vote i think moving forward what i got from the grounds is that people really want these kind of elections held on a weekend or the day be create a holiday right. that is when you would see more of them coming out in mm. their numbers to thank you very much you're welcome <laughs> Tilly, uh, so mommy, mommy is today. <laughs> so mommish. and that's it now let's take the sound bites of the week i i can even see you wearing a pa -pa -pa market .com. Uh, do you own this one too no well uh some industrialists who just invited me the man was so good. Yeah, he just invited me and I was making a trade for him. Yeah, selling angry bears. <laughs> like a papa. Pa, pa. I go and pick angry bears and go and sell some. Then if the small profit I'll get, then I have to come for the papa pa, pa people to come and survive. As I'm talking to you right now, this dawn, I went to Katamanto. Yeah, I pick one or two things. I send it to my customers and I get a, 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 a 20, a 250. So I go take make a work richer, a work richer. What did then, you say the richer means? Uh, the work richer, a work richer. Then, uh, work about four. Uh, yeah, we will take it to Bawoli. Work about Bawoli. Uh, that's it. Yeah, right. Thank you so much for spending time with us today on Reporters Blog. My name is Patricia Gasu.